Thank you for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to take part at this uh, really important symposium to me. So, um, I will. Uh, my topic today is uh, women's rights, their role in post-conflict society. I have to admit that it is not my expertise, but when I have been invited to take a part at this symposium, I said to myself, okay, I'm going to talk about women's rights in societies such as Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, severely affected by the war, and uh, all consequences and, uh, that we are face, uh, that came up from the war and that we are facing in our everyday life. So, I have to also uh, to give one, uh, to to to, to uh, say one digression. This is a completely new presentation, way of presenting uh, things. I mean, this appraisal, it has been uh, done by my friend. So I hope that I will do it properly. So, okay. Yes. Uh, women's rights. Uh, women's rights are rights and uh, entitlements claimed for girls and women of many societies worldwide. So in some countries, uh, women's rights are uh, supported and institutionalized and supported by the law. But in some countries, they are severely uh, suppressed and ignored. When it comes to the women's rights, we are talking about bodily, integ uh, bodily integrity and autonomy, also right to vote, right to, uh, uh, to have access to the education, health care, to hold public office, to work, to fair wages or equal pay, to own property, to, uh, yeah, I said just to, to the education and uh, to me it is really, really important uh, to have uh, equal access to the education, to serve in the military or be conscripted, to enter into legal contracts, to have marital, parental and religion rights. When I was preparing this presentation, my daughter asked me, what's about education, mama? Mommy, does it mean that uh, women don't have uh, equal access to the education all over this world? And I said, yes. She was so much concerned about that. So when I get back at home, I have to discuss with her on this topic. How old is she? She will be in one week, 13 years. And my son is 10. <laughs> I have to mention him just because of the gender balance. <laughs> and now I just have to say, when we are cleaning the home, we are cleaning all four of us. And then uh, so once a cleaning lady who is helping from time to time to us, uh, she asked me, okay, when you are cleaning your home, uh, probably your husband and your son are leaving the apartment. And I say, no. Uh, they prefer, I mean, my son likes to clean, so two of us, my daughter Mia and myself, we are going to do shopping, and they are staying to clean up the mess. Okay. So, um, when it comes to the uh, women's uh, role in post-conflict society, uh, women in post-conflict society, they are facing a lot of challenges, and uh, I, uh, I just noted war trauma and legal framework. Sorry. There is, I have to, to make it somehow. Okay. When it comes to the war trauma, um, in all situations of conflict, women are disproportionately affected by sexual and gender-based violence, forced displacement, 
the destruction of civilian infrastructure and the range of rights violations. When it comes, sorry, I'm really bad in it, I'm really sorry. When it comes to the legal framework, uh, a lot, uh, the le legacy of all kinds of violence endures long after a peace agreement is signed, and this is the case in Bosnia and Herzegovina as well. The first time in history, it was uh, 2011, when it came up that prosecutes sexual and gender-based violence in conflict. The access to justice precisely when women need it most. Now, I will be focused more on Bosnia and Herzegovina. As you just mentioned, I'm coming from the country that uh, has uh, 100,000 deaths during the four, four years of conflict, uh, armed conflict. So uh, there are, uh, in, uh, out of this uh, number, there are uh, 14, only 14,000 children only in Sarajevo that have been victims of the war. So um, this Bosnia and Herzegovina at the moment is uh, extremely divided uh, society across the ethnic lines. And uh, our constitution is uh, recognized only three const constituted uh, ethnic groups, meaning Bosniak Muslims, uh, Croatian uh, Catholics, and uh, Serbian uh, Orthodox. So only three ethnic groups are recognized by Bosnian and Herzegovian constitution. So, but, uh, I see, and uh, as I uh, uh, earlier mentioned, I wanted to speak about women's and our role in post-conflict society. And I have to say that uh, women were the first who took a role in healing uh, trauma from the war. They are leaders in processes of facing and overcoming trauma of violence, destruction and war rape domestic violence and sexual trafficking, and disability and poverty. Um, in March this year, I was in Oslo, in Norway, and uh, I had an opportunity to watch a movie that has been done by Kathy Balkovic on uh, trafficking in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I have to admit uh, that I was not aware uh, about the fact that trafficking took place in uh, even my neighborhood. And that uh, I was passing by, uh, driving the car, uh, and I saw a lot of buildings that was written, written out of Sarajevo, of course, written like night bars. And I didn't know what is happening there, but a lot of women, young women, girls, suffered a lot there. So, as I uh, mentioned that uh, women uh, took uh, the role in, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, in overcoming uh, this uh, trauma and um, and facing all these problems in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I have to say uh, that um, when it comes to the law in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, there, uh, there is no real, real support uh, to, the, to the women, and uh, there is uh, no uh, legacy that protects them. When it comes to the uh, women who suffered sexual uh, abusement and violence during the war, um, there is, uh, they are somehow uh, abounded. And I discussed with a lot of them. Um, there are uh, problems that they are facing every day, like uh, I, I really, I, I'm sorry, but there is no real statistic. That's why I didn't want to, to come here with figures. 
uh, there are enormous number of children who have been born uh, as a, if I can say, result of the uh, rape from the war. So those children are also abounded because uh, all, a lot of their mothers didn't want to keep them uh, because, I mean, uh, you know that uh, reasons are really heavy and deep because they are really hurted. Uh, they, those children didn't come up as um, results of the love and nice feelings. So, unfortunately, a lot of them are abounded. Leaving women survivors with little resource to compensation, restitution, and rehabilitation. Only t uh, every tenth woman, uh, we can say that in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, I mean, rape survivors receiving any kind of treatment. Uh, uh, also, when it comes to economy, uh, there is, uh, I mean, uh, those uh, victims, they are facing with the pro problem of unemployment, uh, so it's not easy to get a job. When it comes, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay. I can say that the mayor challenge remains the lack of political will and coordination between numerous political and, uh, entities to make the laws and reality in the lives of women. So, um, as I mentioned during my introduction, uh, I, I tried to present real situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, uh, political situation now, and now I will try to explain to you that uh, the, uh, about position of Bosnia and Herzegovina in legal, in uh, state government, uh, how many women do we have in uh, leading institutions, for example. We have, uh, that's the fact that in parliament we have something around 30% of women present, uh, present. But what is the problem? That when it comes at the parliament, uh, it is really hard to be elected uh, for the government institutions. So that means that at the moment we, uh, we don't have any women in council of, uh, of ministry. Uh, there is no women representative. Uh, all of them are ministers, uh, 16 of them. Then when it comes to the government, uh, at the federal uh, at the federal level, we have only one woman minister, and that's all. Uh, at the moment, that I'm sorry that uh, I missed this uh, open discussion. There is a discussion about uh, changing of elections uh, law, uh, and by uh, that changes, uh, we will uh, probably uh, secure, uh, ensure that uh, there will be 40% of women who will, uh, who will um, be presented in uh, government institutions and parliament as well. Um, uh, I, I, I also read a lot about um, about uh, how uh, women uh, experts and um, uh, women's rights fighters uh, see position of uh, Bosnian and Herzegovian women within Bosnian and Herzegovian society at the moment. Uh, so one of them is Professor Nada Lir Sofranić. I don't know, have you had a chance to meet with this lady? Uh, according to her estimation, um, uh, the women are presented uh, only in the last election that we had in 2010. Uh, only 36% of women have been uh, presented at the lists for the election. 67% uh, have been uh, men. Uh, also, uh, in, her, in uh, one of her articles, uh, she mentioned that women 
um, are less, uh, more or less uh, presented at the media than men in Bosnia and Herzegovina, as I mentioned already in politics as well, and uh, in all top positions. And uh, I cannot uh, talk about that, that it came up just like that, that it is consequence of the war. Of course, it's not. Uh, I have to refer in uh, to the tradition and culture of Bosnia and Herzegovina, because uh, women traditionally are somehow more, um, it is more acceptable that they are, um, they are in charge for the families, for growing kids and staying at home. And uh, I mean, somehow to keep under control uh, home, uh, homes activities. So uh, that's uh, why I'm facing and I'm getting a lot of questions from the people with whom your kids will stay when you are traveling. And I'm just like, but with the father, I mean, he's there. So I mean, that's something that, and I think that uh, it is our task, task of the women to fight for our equal position and to help to each other and to support each other, which is not the case. I heard a lot of times like, okay, you are going to vote for the women. From women, I heard, you are going to, to, uh, to vote for the women. And I'm just like, uh, yes, I will support, I will give a chance because women can, uh, may, uh, can change their positions by themselves, of course, with support of men. And uh, by talking and by speaking about gender equality, I have to say that we cannot speak only about women. We need a man to make this world better. So all together uh, with equal, um, um, equal uh, strength, equal involvement in making the world better and to secure women's position and women's uh, role equal as a man. Thank you. And I'm sorry for this technical, how to say. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you very much.